Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be, and welcome back to some Club 100 karting for the Sprint Series in 2022, where this time we're back at Wilton Mill for the second time this year. Um, although this time we're in the heavyweight starting this first heat in P3, looking to try and get the day off to the best start that we possibly can. Eyes on the lights, engine notes rise, and away we go into oblivion name of the first corner here and it's a good start oh it's a pod to pod contact from Kavanagh on the pole sit and that's going to allow Tim Penny I believe to slot right up into the lead of this one at the top of the hill that's Christmas come early but um tish for Tim Penny there as he goes through Christmas corner and is miles out in front already so seeing as this round is being uh, expertly commented over by the Double Dash Media guys and Alpha Live with the live stream um, I thought I'd do a little bit of a scientific test and I bribed them uh, ahead of the day with some Jaffa cakes to try and see if that would get rid of any commentator's curse. But more on that later, let's have a look at what happened in this first corner. So having raced at uh, Wilton Mill quite a few times in the past, I knew ahead of time that getting a cutback through Crook on lap one is a really, really good strategy. Now, as we see here, Simon really shoots the gap, but in doing so, they end up making contact and uh, they really lose their momentum, which means that cutback for us works a treat. Look at the gap that Tim Penny has. Uh, and do you know what, at the moment, He's actually he's matching the pace of Joe good. Holmes nicely. This is good stuff for Tim Petty in that 165. So, yeah, it would be really important to try and maintain that gap. And if we could, try and break it out a bit more. Because Joe Holmes behind is a very, very fast driver. And uh, if we had any hope of winning this heat, we had to try and keep in front of him. How's the pace looking? He's looking very good very for good. Tim Petty here. 55.071. He is holding that gap at two and a half seconds. Or there or thereabouts over Joe Holmes. And that would kind of be the race from that point. It stayed pretty stale, um, a bit of a stalemate between me and Joe, which is a really good confidence booster as we uh, came to finish race number one. No problems though for Tim Penny. This has been a very impressive drive. Checks over the shoulder. There's not many drivers over the past few years who've been able to say on the last lap that they've checked over the shoulder and seen a 3.4 second lead back to Joe Holmes. Tim Penny wins heat three comfortably. Brilliant stuff from him. Joe Holmes is going to come come across the line in P2. Then Dan Hunt Underhill in third place. So let's move ourselves on to heat number two, where again we'll be starting on the pole side of the grid. Um, so we're looking for that cutback move again. And again, we've got some heavy hitters in this one. We had Joe Holmes in the last one. We've got Anwar um, and we've got uh, Dicky Allen in this one as well, just going past us there, in fact. But we managed to get our cutback move once again. And we're up behind uh, Lee Henderson now, going up towards. Christmas corner. Um, now you can see there that there's a different colour number plate on Leeds car. That's because he's a super heavyweight and we're a heavyweight. So it would kind of be important for us to try and get in front of him as soon as possible because realistically we're not racing Lee. Lee's got his own race with the other super heavyweights. Tim Penny now having a look at Lee Henderson uh, on this one uh, th through Ashby and into Wilkins. It hasn't paid off there. And I think Amwapple Smith actually may have got back through on Tim Penny as a result. Yeah, and we kind of got forced on the outside of Lee there going into Wilkins, and that allowed um, Anwar, who had a much better run out of uh, the hairpin actually as well, to get up our inside, and we had to leave the space at that point, otherwise we'd have ended up coming together. We go and shoot the gap to try and get up the inside of Lee in the second part of boot. That's quite a good move if you can make it work, but we just didn't seem to have the drive coming off it, and uh, Lee was able to get back around outside. He tells us to get onto his bumper, help push him up the hill, but in this sprint race format, we need to be working forward as quickly as possible. Tim Penny's going to try and tuck underneath and look out as well for Matt Isherwood, who's just arrived on the scene here as well. It's going to go three wide, potentially into Christmas corner. Tim Penny, is he wise that he's there? It doesn't need to be because he gets the braking done. So with the help there of uh, Matt, I believe that was behind us, we're able to get a bit of a bump draft past Lee, and that's us up into fourth place at this point. And now we've got to try and chase down Steve Bosley, who's in front of us at the moment, uh, in third place, whilst not losing a place to Matt behind, who uh, he's been feeling pretty quick. A look over the shoulder from Tim Penny and we went, where's Isherwood gone? The answer was he'd gone to the inside. But usually though, Isherwood went, no, I'm going to do a sort of inverse dummy and go to your outside now. Really testing the resolve of Tim Penny here at the moment is Matt Isherwood. So whilst in this sprint format, we wouldn't normally want to be defending early on the race. We, uh, we also didn't want to lose places and an opportunity to get past Steve. But as we come up to Christmas corner, taking a normal race in line um, and we can see Matt at the inside of us there. So we give him the racing room um, and knowing that he's feeling quicker and he's a class one as well. We've got to remember that, that we're in class two. So if a class one gets past us, it's not the end of the world. 
we'll see if we can use Matt's pace now to try and catch up with Steve and then we'll sort it out at the end of the race, see if we can get past Matt as well. So here we are coming through Oblivion and Crook. We're right on Matt's bumper and we're going to try and help him past a bit like he did to us with Lee earlier on. Look at this. Bad issue with a Tim Penny. I think that was working together, bump drafting almost. Both get by on Steve Bosley on the run up the hill towards Christmas Corner. And so that would just be staying in P4, having got past Steve, but we didn't quite have enough to get past Matt, so we'll move on to heat number three, where we're starting 10th um, on the outside this time, on the even side of the grid. And we'll see if that tuck back move, cut back move rather, works for us a third time. Um, and it's going to, we managed to get that inside line and that helps us all the way up the hill because we've now got the inside line going into Christmas corner. Sometimes the outside can work for you, but this time we're going to try and keep it on the inside and then keep our momentum as we go past the kink or what is affectionately known as Boxing Day. Squeeze it up the inside of Inkerman's, bit of an opportunistic move there. And as we go down into the hairpin at Ashby, we're keeping it tight, making sure that we don't let anyone pass through our inside, but it all gets a bit rough and tumble. We get hit in the back, we hit into the back of Steve in front. Um, but we're able to keep it tighter going through Wilkins and then going down into uh, Ozier's we've got that line and we've managed to make a good few places on lap one of this race. Quick look over the shoulder to see what's happening there and going into the boot we've got the line up the inside we make that move stick lovely camera angle there from the uh, Alpha live stream and that's us up into third place from 10th on the grid um, at the end lap of lap one. Samuel Bensley has the lead ahead of Daniel Taylor and Tim Penny at the moment. Another good start here, Howard, for Tim Penny. Saw him take a race win earlier on today. Here he is, just nudging Daniel Taylor along. Trying to work with, in fact, no, he's going to try and go down the inside now, takes a position. Daniel Taylor doesn't fight that too hard. Takes second place. Now, in this one, we felt like we had a really, really good cart. So even though the gap in front of this moment is quite big, we were quite comfortable that we were going to be able to break that down by the uh, by the next few stages of the race, which is exactly what happened. 56.478. It's okay pace, but Tim Penny is down in the low 55s. Got a feel. It's just a matter of time before Tim Penny strikes and goes back into the lead of yet another race. Here he goes down the inside into Ashby. Got to get the braking right. Don't overrun too much. Very good stuff once again from Tim Penny. Yeah, brilliantly read. Very impressed with how he's been driving today. And having got into the lead of heat number three, it was just a case of trying to drive away, make as few mistakes as possible. And I don't really think we made that many, if any, uh, over the course of this race. It was a really nice, uh, nice drive. And I remember the cart felt lovely. Uh, it was starting to brighten up. And as we come through O's, there's a little look over the shoulder just to sort of see what that gap was looking like into the boot for the last time. And that would be a win in heat number one, a fourth place in heat number two, and a win in heat number three, getting ready for the A final. A second win of the day for Tim Penny. Very good stuff there in heat 10. Daniel Taylor will come across the line in second place. Samuel Bensley matches a best heats results of the year. So for the A final, we get four minutes at the start of the race to work out whether or not you want to change your car, and we did. We really didn't feel like the one that we went out in initially was going to be the one for us and give us the chance of a best result. So um, having qualified P4, we decided to come in, change it, as did um, a bunch of other drivers as well. And uh, with a cold car, we're at a little bit of a disadvantage at the start of this race, but hopefully it will come good for us. We're looking... Not quite so good for it because Tim Penny's just slotted himself in there. There we go. We're good for the start then. Eyes on the lights. The engine notes rise and into oblivion we go. Dickie Allen leads them away and Joe Holmes is slotting immediately into second place. So for a fourth time today, we're trying that cutback move and we've got our line that we wanted going up towards the hill. Um, you can see us there just following Kurt Holmes up the hill and uh, Anwar gets a really good run round our outside. The benefit there of going around the outside of Christmas is you're able to keep the momentum um, and that's what helped in there and you can see we've already lost a bit of uh, a bit of touch to Anwar and Alex Pritchard who he's just overtaken um, so perhaps this cart isn't quite on song yet it hasn't had quite the same chance to warm up as the other carts around us and uh, we need to try and get up to pace quickly now this is somewhere we've been feeling good all day off of Ozius down towards the boot but as you'll see here we just get absolutely stripped going into uh, going into the first part of the boot section we have to give the space 
to uh, I think that's Daniel Taylor who's just gone past us and we settle in having lost positions off the start of this race um, and to add insult to injury as we cross the line we clip the monster curve as well which hurts your momentum um, all the way pretty much up this hill because from that point all the way up to Christmas you're basically full throttle in these Club 100 carts so we've got some work to do if we want to try and uh, keep our position as where we are but we're under attack we've got Chris Alcock behind us and you can see there we missed our apex going through Christmas because we had to leave room for Chris who'd put his nose up our inside but this time uh, we're not able to defend he got a much better run through increments than we did and he's able to slip it up the inside of us and uh, now it's us to try and tuck onto his bumper and follow him along as we have our pursuit but after a few laps you can see that we've been gapped by Chris um, and not that's not to take anything away from the drivers in front Although I feel like possibly um, we kind of used up our luck of the draw um, in the heats. And so this time we don't quite have enough to fight with. Um, but it also could be that there was quite a long wait before this race and I'd just um, fallen off a little bit and fallen out of my rhythm. So we're still at this point in time in, uh, in eighth place, I think, which is third place in C2. However, we've just had done un done Underhill, Dan Underhill rather, just go up our inside going into Ashby and then we uh, we make a mistake that we we hadn't been making all weekend we've been trying to um, avoid getting stuck to the outside going into Wilkins but this time we do and that allows Matt Isherwood as well who we know is quick from earlier in the day to get past us and we're down into 10th place and 4th in C2 now as you see in front Matt goes for a big move up the inside of the second part of boot um, and there's some contact there between him and Dan but Really nice and fair racing there from Matt. You can see pointing Dan through um, to let him have that position back. So some brilliant sportsmanship up in front of us. And we end up in P10, um, but I think that shouldn't have taken away from what was a absolutely fantastic day in the end. We had two wins, a good uh, result in the second heat. And realistically, that final as well was still a good race, even if we did go backwards, which isn't what we really would have wanted. So lots of positives to take from Wilton Mill this time going into the final two rounds of the season so hope you enjoyed and until next time have a good one